Topic number one, an interesting one, a very interesting and also slightly bizarre topic. So the the, the fallout from this Meghan Markle, uh, Prince Harry, Oprah interview has been crazy to watch, isn't it, really, right? Um, the amount of mental gymnastics and backflips everyone's doing to try and understand what is going on, to downplay Meghan Markle's experience, to say that Prince Harry is a cuck, like so many weird narratives are coming out of it, right? And then the other side of it is even more interesting, the side of it concerning Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan, for some untoward reason, decided it was his responsibility to stand up for the royal family on public TV, you know, lambasted Meghan Markle, questioned her, you know, her, her kind of assertion that she was suffering from mental health and wanted to take her own life, and also just questioned her entire experience living within the, living with the royal family or living close to the royal family, and also questioned specifically her story concerning um, the skin tone or the skin shade of her son, Archie. And of course, everyone naturally lost their shit in it, right? Everyone actually lost their shit. Piers Morgan's always painted out as a big bad bully, even though it's oddly, it's weird, right? Because in the beginning of the co of lockdown, he was sort of like everybody's... Oh, you know what's funny? I bet Boris Johnson's happy that this happened, isn't it? Because because he was giving it the business to Boris Johnson, Matt Hancock, all those kind of guys. But anyway, in the beginning of lockdown, Piers was like the people's champ, sort of, right? Because he was standing up for the you know, the uh, the citizens of the UK demanding questions about PPE, demanding questions about COVID, demanding questions about lockdown, about the vaccine, about the hospitality industry, really pushing um, against this narrative from the government that they did everything that they can, holding the politicians to an account. Like he was doing some really great work in that extent. But as per usual, when the, when the media or when the public deem you to be... Um, deem you to be unlikable or deem you to be a villain it's very difficult for you to turn it around like in recent years only person i can think that's kind of done that to a certain extent has been maybe a simon cow and to some a lesser extent which is probably a bit of a reach a kim kardashian but i can't think of anybody else who's been painted as a villain and turned it around you can go from being like the angel and everyone that somebody loves and then turn into a villain but it's very difficult to start as a villain like everyone regards you as a villain and turn it around it's very difficult i even think of somebody like um on big brother that nasty nick guy and how he got painted to be all you know not painted to be he, he was a bit of a prick on the show but regardless he's still suffering from the consequences of that show people still think of him from the guy that he was in what what was that the late 90s early 2000s right I mean, nearly 20 plus years and he's still suffering from the consequences of being painted as a villain all the way back then so we have a thing here especially in the uk where there is no real coming back from it so it was only a matter of time before Piers morgan stepped in it and put his foot in his mouth and of course he picked the wrong target because if anything i've known from analyzing these things in culture if you do aim for your target, you can't miss. You can't be going out there with some weak argument. You can't be out going out there just to be contrarian for contrarian's sake because we've seen how it ends. Milo Yan Yanopoulos tried to do that, right? He tried to be the um, agent provocateur, the agent of chaos, right? Agent provocateur, yeah. Agent of chaos, that's what he tried to be. He tried to upset the apple car. He tried to be controversial, um, you know, get people upset, all this sort of stuff. And eventually he got completely eradicated from the public discord. So much so now that I read a story that he's, what, dedicating his life to catholicism or something and going to the monastery something in those kind of lines crazy right but usually it doesn't work that way it doesn't work well for you and of course Piers morgan being of the, the doof that he is he didn't really aim at his target correctly and when he didn't aim he gave reason and he gave opportunity for people to go and lambast him and when he felt the pressure he walked off the stage which was his first mistake his first mistake was walking off the set right because if you're painted as a bully and you're, you know, giving your opinion, quote unquote, you're kind of talking from a point of her, regardless, right? Because I still believe even if you, even if you're saying the most nonsense things, you should be allowed to say them aloud. And if people think you're trying shit, they should be allowed to turn their back on you and walk away. Like that's how it should be running. But we shouldn't be covering the person's mouths, dragging them off to the bottom of some flipping hellhole somewhere, putting them in solitary confinement and not allowing them to speak at all. No, speak as much as you want, but we have the right to turn our backs to you. Similar to those, you know, street ministers that you see on the street. If you don't want to communicate with them, you just keep on moving and you pretend like you didn't even hear what they said. They could be screaming out the most derogatory things. They could be kind of insulting a subculture that you're a part of, a subgroup you're a part of, insulting your sexual orientation, the people that you're, whatever. But you just have a way of blanking out because you don't care a crap about what they have to say same occurs with these public figures but again what Piers Morgan did wrong was that he painted himself as to be the kind of you know un no he, he painted himself to be the bastion of free speech I say the uncomfortable truths I say this say that when really and truly he's a bit of a doof just looking for uh, attention at this moment he got put under a bit of pressure the moment somebody pushed him 
a little bit back, gently too. That is it, Alex, the 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 uh, the little. Um, the little, well, the 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 very um slivet um light skinned gentleman to the left of him gave him a very light jab, a very light retort, a very light pushback. Kind of explained his point of view as respectful as he could. And of course, when Pierce started doing that, but no, but 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 that annoying shouty thing, he just thought, you know what, f this, I'm gonna lay in on you, laid in on him. And then I think obviously the triggering point must have been the thing that he mentioned about him being obsessed with Mega Markle, which he clearly is, isn't it? Which is okay to be as well, but. You can't go this far. You could be obsessed with somebody, but you can't make their life a living hell. Leave them alone. That's what that's what stalkers do. Do you know what I mean? Be obsessed with somebody from afar, but don't, you know, let your obsession seep into their everyday lives. Regardless, that's why you fucked up walking away. And now he is on a press tour, going around talking as if he's a big bad wolf. And really, you ran away the moment you got called to account. The moment somebody tried to call you out your name, the moment someone tried to push back on your retort, you ran away. And like I said prior on another show, he has some genuine, legit, valid criticisms that probably could merit a little bit of conversation. They could merit some bit of investigation, right? Some people could argue, hey, was it very responsible for Meghan Markle to even put out that story concerning her kid if she's not willing to name names? Especially when you compare, you know, everyday life probably is up to you. But in this kind of instance uh, regarding the monarchy and what they mean to England, all this sort of shit, maybe it was a bit irresponsible to put out that story without naming a name, right? It is what it is. You can think what you think, it is what it is. Some people would argue, hey, is it really... Um, are you really trying to keep your head under, you know, are you really trying to keep a low profile and, you know, rewrite the narrative by sitting down for a two-hour interview with Oprah? Is that really conducive to kind of keeping yourself out of limelight? Who knows? We have no idea regarding it. Did she do everything she could with the family to kind of immerse herself and kind of be part of that whole thing? Who knows? We're not there. There are some clear things that you can push back on, right? But this guy is such a dumb dumb. He doesn't have the, you know, the acumen and the intelligence and maybe the, um, whatever, the smarts to articulate himself in a way that he can make a very strong argument without having to resort to name calling, without having to resort to theatrics and all this sort of nonsense. And here he is on an apology tour, as per usual, the only people that win in this are the ones that always want the attention, explaining why he's a bastion of free speech. I believe in freedom of speech. I believe in the right to uh, be allowed to have an opinion. Uh, if people want to believe Meghan Markle, that's entirely their right. I don't believe almost anything that comes out of her mouth. And I think the damage she's done to the British monarchy and to the Queen at a time when Prince Philip is lying in hospital is enormous and frankly contemptible. So uh, if I have to fall on my sword for expressing an honestly held opinion about Meghan Markle, and that diatribe of bilge that she came out with in that interview, so be it. Cool, right? You like to say what you want. Obviously, he's chatting shit, right? But because we saw the evidence of it, if you were really a bastion of free speech, you would have just stayed and debated that Alex guy. Because I'm sure if you would have stayed, you would have been fine. He said far worse things before. He's done some far worse crimes, you know, considering his history in the flipping tabloids papers. I'm sure you'd be able to write this one out if you wanted to write it out. But again, because of the heart of it, really the heart of it, the issue is that Megan rejected him when he went out on a date with her, allegedly, according to him. It could still be one of those scenes in The Joker, right, where he's got this whole idea about, you know, this fantasy that they had dates and shit, when really it could just be, you know, they exchanged some flirtatious emails and correspondence here and there, and it kind of died in the water at the moment Prince Harry stepped into the party, innit? It is what it is. We all sometimes take some L's. But I think because that was at the heart of it, that's really the heart of his issue, that he has more of an issue with her personally, regardless of what it is. We don't know what it is. It could be date. That could, that's probably a bit of a comedic thing people are really using to you know to uh, stick to hitting with. But regardless of the of what the problem is, because it wasn't weighed in anything real, when he got pressed, he felt nervous and ran away. Right. So that's that's basically the the main prerogative and uh, the main point of issue that I have with it completely is the fact that there are some real concerns that people could have and could throw up and say, hey. You know, there are some points where you can maybe say, should royal fa should the royal family or any more member of the royal family be allowed to talk to the press and use ment what you call it, emotional manipulation in order to get their point across? Who knows? Should um should she be putting out that you know story regarding the kid's skin color that somebody asks or how dark it's gonna be without naming names? Who knows? There are some real points that you can kind of push back on and have an actual debate upon and speak about but you know challenging somebody when they say hey this this is what this is what happened to me and i think it's racist and you say nah it isn't yeah it is <laughs> you know so you get into that contest <laughs> and they're talking about your mental health and saying that you went to kill yourself it's like oh 
what so what are you gonna ask next is he gonna ask her for proof is he gonna ask her for like video evidence like what more do you want from this person in this respect like especially when you consider that she's kind of like how much how many times has she spoken to the press like publicly in this way not that many i don't think obviously she might have done some things behind the scenes calculated maneuvers here and there because she's a you know a celebrity uh public figure everyone's got their way to make sure that they kind of get in front of the story but in terms of actually sitting down and being a bit of a media whore and you know really trying to make sure everyone knows her side of the story she hasn't really done too much to be honest if anything i've heard prince harry talk more on her behalf than i've heard actually Meghan markle speak now that's not to say she can't be manipulative that's not to say that she couldn't have done this in the past but again i don't no, and I don't give a shit. The thing that's annoying me in this regard is that why is it when people are like, hey, because I'm of the position, I'm more of a free speech absolutist, right? I think you should be able to say whatever the fuck you want, whenever you want, however you want. But also, I'm also a real big believer in the fact that if you're willing to say whatever the fuck you want, you should also be a, a aware or okay or open to the idea of people reacting however they want to react whether that's firing you from your job whether that's smearing your name regardless of what it is you should be okay because you have got your point out that's what should matter not this idea that oh no i've got my point out but you can't fire me why can't they you don't own the station that's not your show you're a hired hand you're an employee you're a very you know, influential one you've probably done a lot of good for that um, brand in general but in the end of it you're just an employee and it, it looks like from what he said he's giving he's giving us the impression that most likely he was pushed as opposed to he left on his own will probably somebody up above you know in the itv was like hey we like you anyway we don't want to just sack you without giving you any sort of you know uh money and uh a little goodbye note in terms of what you've done for good morning britain so if you walk you're going to be um eligible for whatever whatever allegedly i'd imagine that's what happened happened right so he basically was given the chance to kind of leave off his own volition as opposed to getting fired cool whatever but surely this entered his head when he went into this idea of like, I'm going to die on this Meghan Markle's lying about her mental health and lying about this, the, that conversation about this, the, you know, the color of us, the, the skin tone of a kid, whatever it is, right? Surely that has to play in your head about the, the, the outcomes that could, you know, be lying ahead for me once I kind of take this road. I don't know. I just find it odd. So that's why I think sometimes in this particular issue, I just think, I just think Piers Morgan isn't that bright. 